Hi there everyone, we are once again at the Royal Astronomical Society in London and I'm here with one of my favourite astronomers in the world, Professor Mike Merrifield, who has come down from Nottingham to talk to us about this book here. You've been squirrelled away in the corner for about an hour or so looking through <laughs> this, waiting for your chance to talk about it. What book is this here? This is a book called The Almagest by Ptolemy and this particular edition is very, very old. 1515 is the publication date for this. 1515? I, I didn't even know they were printing books that long ago. It, it is the first published edition of this book. The book itself was actually written in about 150 AD. So this was already an ancient text and they finally got around to getting it out in print. They had to wait for printing to be invented before they got it out in print. Oh, you had to wait. It was going to happen eventually. It had been copied from hand to hand. The clue's kind of in the name, actually. It's called the Almagest. It wasn't its original name. Its original name was in Greek because it was originally written in Greek. But Almagest is from the Arabic, al meaning the, and majest is actually corruption of the Greek word for greatest. But you can see that even the title of it here, it's, it is in Latin via the Arabic, via the original Greek. So it's not only has it been written from hand to hand, but it's been translated at least three times along the way. All right, some Chinese whispers sort of thing happening here. Right, and it's not a small book, right? It's actually got masses of technical detail in it. So the idea of actually transcribing some of this stuff, you know, you've got tables. So here's a whole table of positions and magnitudes of stars, for example, and they've got all their positions and how bright they are on the sky. Pages and pages of this stuff, which all had to be handwritten and transcribed from hand to hand. This is a long time ago that Ptolemy is around. I'm assuming it's not going to have too much useful astronomical information in it. I mean, he wouldn't have had telescopes and we wouldn't have had a whole lot of technology. I mean, how much could he have known about what was going up in the stars? So all the, like these, these stellar positions, they were all pretty accurately measured, even by modern astronomical standards. So although he didn't have telescopes, he had sort of giant protractors and things to allow him to measure the angles of things on the sky. And the other thing is that actually, although this is his book, the star catalogue here, for example, isn't his original work in that the original star catalogue probably that most of this came from was written several hundred years before Ptolemy by Hipparchus. I want us to look at the start of the book. A table here, tabula. Sorry there, I'm dropping some Latin in there for you. <laughs> I think that's probably the contents. Yes. That'd be my guess. Oh, we've got these lovely little flourish here. I don't know what they're called, but I love those things at the start of chapters. Very nice. Oh, they're all there. Look at them. They're everywhere. This bird is pecking the eye of this moon tree, tree thing. Is that eating something? Fascinating, isn't it? I don't know. It's eating its own tail, isn't it? I'm sure that's not what we're supposed to be looking at anyway. <laughs> All right, sorry. Let's get sciencey. There are many diagrams like this. The thing that Ptolemy is most famous for and that was first described in his book is his model of the solar system. And famously, he had this model of the solar system where the Earth was close to the center and everything else was orbiting around it, so the sun and the planets. Of course, it doesn't really quite work because actually we know, of course, the Earth isn't really close to the center of the solar system. And the fundamental problem you face is that if you actually watch the planets on the sky, Although they seem to mostly go in one direction, once in a while some of them will suddenly track backwards for a little while and then forwards again. It's called retrograde motion. And it's essentially just to do with the fact that the Earth is orbiting around the Sun as well as the planet orbiting around the Sun, so sometimes the Earth's overtaking them. In order to fix that, Ptolemy introduced this idea of these things called epicycles. So although he had the planets going around on these circles, he also made the planets themselves go around on these little epicycles as well. So this is a hack? It kind of is. I mean, it works, right? It works brilliantly in that people more than a thousand years after he wrote this book were still using his method to calculate the positions of planets and it gives you the right answer. Ptolemy was a complete polymath in that another book that he wrote, for example, was the first atlas of the world that actually had, you know, all the uh, countries in more or less the right places, all the continents in more or less the right places. Just as the atlas was his description of the Earth, this was his attempt to describe the rest of the universe and he was clearly driven by this want to explain how things work. Sean from the library has dug something up very interesting for us. Have a look at this. Here's the astronomical register from January 1876 when this copy was donated and we have the minutes of the society's meeting here. 50 presents have been received by the society since last November and amongst them were some valuable books which had been given by Lord Lindsay. They named some of these books including Vieta's Canon Mathematicus, whatever that says. And then we also have mentioned second <laughs> Ptolemy's Almagest. Professor Adams, who's the president of the society, says, the special thanks of the society are, I think, due to Lord Lindsay for his very valuable present. The Vieta is, I know, a very valuable book. And then we have in brackets, applause. And I like this. Mr. Rayner, the secretary, then pipes up again. I think he sees this as a bit of an opportunity. I hope it will stimulate other fellows to give any unique works they may have to the society. It is very important that we should have a complete library of reference books. Such works would be more useful, I think, in our library than in private libraries, followed by laughter. Everyone obviously found that very amusing. 
and then a special vote of thanks to Lord Lindsay was carried unanimously. So if you give very, very valuable books to the Royal Astronomical Society, your reward will be a special vote of thanks from the Society. And what more could you ask than Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Support for this video comes from 23andMe, a personalised genetic service that helps you learn what the 23 chromosomes that make up your DNA can tell you about your ancestry, traits and health. To help with scientific research and discoveries and learn your own personal DNA story, go to 23andMe.com and then add slash objectivity so they know you came from here.